Hi folks, Lou here, and I'm going to summarize five ways to introduce in uncertainty to board games. Now, if you want to design a game as opposed to a puzzle, you need to have some uncertainty in it. Traditionally in games, that has been done using dice, but there are several other ways to do it. Keep in mind, many classic games, as we call it, don't have uncertainty built in, but they are puzzles sometimes solvable by humans, for example, Tic-Tac-Toe or Nine Men's Morris, sometimes not solvable by humans, as in chess and checkers. So here is a list of the five ways, and I'll describe each in turn. <clears throat> and dice is the obvious one, and I have a saying, he who lives by the dice, dies by the dice. But I like to play Dungeons and Dragons and there's lots of dice in that. It's just a matter of how you deal with using dice. <clears throat> now, if you're designing a game, try to avoid using buckets full of dice, lots and lots of dice. Though some players do like to roll lots of dice in dice fests like Axis and Allies and in games like Yahtzee and the like where the dice are the focus. And keep in mind when you're using dice, there's a difference between linear results, where you usually roll one die, and a Gaussian curve result, for example, when you sum 2d6. Now, I've talked about that at greater length in other videos. Now, alternative to dice is cards. Many players feel more in control when using cards. Players may have choices with cards that they don't have with dice, and of course, you can have your typical deck would be 54 cards. There could be 54 different cards that each does a different thing. So you tend to have more variety than you do with dice. Hand management becomes a skill, deciding which card to use at a particular time. And cards are versatile because you can have the cards in hand or in a deck or you can have them face down on the table, possibly with no one allowed to look at them until they draw them or, or, or do something particular. Cards can be in categories according to the color or image on the card back. That's better than dice having different sizes. But of course, a few dice cost more than a deck of cards. So that makes the game more expensive. Another method is drawing from a bag or cup. You usually have cardboard pieces in the bag or the cup that the player blind draws. Now, this may be no different functionally than rolling dice, but it feels more elegant to some people. However, if the container is not replenished or reconstituted, the odds change, which is similar to what happens as people draw from a deck of cards. It's much closer drawing um, to cards than it is to dice. But it gives a different feel and there's a different expense involved. Hidden identity, which typically involves blocks, is another method. Now identity here is mainly strength in war games, but it could be other things. Standing wooden blocks are used or tiles in plastic stands and it shows the identity on one side and a blank on the other, which is facing the opponent. Now, a drawback of this is you can't really use this for more than three players, because if you are as, having as many as four players, then it's going to be too easy to peek or accidentally see what's going on. So think Stratego type games, for example. Now, this can be done with upside down cardboard pieces lying flat on the table, but the owner will have to peek at his pieces often to see what they are, and that's a big hassle. Blocks work better, but they're more expensive. Of course, when you have the pieces face down, you could go above three players too. And yes, you can make block games without using dice. I have, in fact, the hidden identity is the only uncertainty and those two-player games. Now, more than two sides is a way to introduce uncertainty. And I'm talking about sides, not players. Partners is not enough. 
A typical co-op game has two sides, the players and the game. A single player game has two sides, the player and the game. But if you have three or more sides, all kinds of math-like calculations, such as required by game theory minimax strategy, no longer apply. Now, at this point, some people will be saying, well, in a two-player game, you've got uncertainty about what the other player is going to do. Technically, that's true, but if you're playing the way game theory indicates, you can account for one other player or for the game if it's a solitaire or single player, but it becomes virtually impossible to account for more than one other side. You assume the other side or player is playing perfectly and aim to maximize your minimum gain, minimax strategy. If the other side plays less than perfectly, you'll be better off in the long run. Now this is a brief discussion. I suppose you could write a book about this. In fact, Greg Kostikian has written a book about uncertainty in games generally. And while I haven't read the book yet, I have read the original very long description article that it came from, and it was quite useful, brilliant even. Thanks for listening.